Hi, I'm Dawn. This is Hudson Vintage. This week I pulled some of my favorite Art Deco pieces. My goal was to show you pieces that you might not recognize when you're out in the wild thrift shopping or at yard sales or estate sales or maybe you've inherited something and you'd like to know what it is. If you have something that is authentic Art Deco, I pulled the unusual pieces, the pieces that are definitely more rare and valuable. And next week I am doing something really special. I'm doing a virtual $20 table pop-up sale. And the exciting thing about that is because Google has started to pay the overhead, everything is worth so much more than $20. It's really just a way for me to say thank you to the viewers. And the more people that watch, the more Google will pay us to watch and the better the sales will get. But right now, this is the first one that I've been able to do because Google has finally started to pay the overhead and everything is worth so much more than $20 and I've already pulled most of it and it's very exciting. And if you buy two pieces, the shipping is free if you're in the United States. So make sure that you click like, subscribe and ring that bell and make sure your notifications are on because then you won't miss out when I release a new video and next week is gonna be really good. Okay, so in the meantime, let's get started. I have here my first group. This is Art Deco, this is German. This is made by someone named Jacob Bengel. This is early Art Deco industrial age. This is a chrome metal and early plastic. And you can see it has kind of a geometric Art Deco form, very recognizable. I'll be showing you what it looks like on the turntable. That's the back. It's kind of studded with chrome. I love the Jacob Bengel pieces and they are usually in this kind of bright green. They also have like a red and an orange. If you see this, something like this, don't be put off by the idea that it's chrome or plastic because this is original Art Deco Jacob Bengel from pre-World War II Germany. <laughs> and that's beautiful on, oh, and I should talk about what I'm wearing. These are natural turquoise and then this is from my thrifted video that I did and this is actually a peel and this is a handmade artisan piece. So make sure you check out that video. This is absolutely beautiful. This is like in the style of a negligee. These are wedding cake beads. These are more, these I think people can recognize. They know Italian Venetian glass beads when they see them. Um, these are the wedding cakes. The thing about this is the coloration. This is a very Art Deco color palette, the aqua blue with the pink flowers and also the shape of it and the length of it. These are from the island of Murano. And I should say actually about what things are worth right now. Very, things vary in different markets. And I know you guys have been asking about valuation of jewelry. The thing is anyone who does that, I feel like it's a bit disingenuous because markets change. It's never going to be cheap, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It started out expensive. It's always going to remain expensive, good quality, or things that have historical significance in certain periods of design will always retain their value. So maybe 200, 300 out in the usual, you know, medium market at a medium store. And it's lovely. This is Chinese Art Deco. This is authentic Chinese Art Deco in sterling. There's the clasp. I'll show it on the turntable. This is absolutely beautiful cloisonne work in the two different kinds of blue with these barrel shaped beads. And that is in a medium shop, medium market, probably $500. This ring I love. This is an Art Deco gorgeous geometric cut glass, pink glass on sterling. The interesting thing about these Art Deco rings, they're really large because the women wore them over gloves. 
So they often have a really large ring size and that's the reason if you were ever wondering, but look how beautiful that is. That is so Art Deco with the double pointed glass and the kind of geometric shape and even the color. This is lovely. This is Vohal glass. I'll show this on the turntable too. Look at it in the little hearts. See that faceting? That is Vohal. It comes from, I think it's Vohal in England that made it. And they were already making it for a long time by the time the Art Deco period came. But when they started making things in the Art Deco style, as was the fashion of the day, they got really geometric and beautiful. And I'll put up some pictures if I can find them on the internet. I just happen to really love this one because it's black and the black is actually really rare. Volhall glass, if you see it, it's often found in red and green and gold. Um, Maybe pink is another one. This is Norman Hartnell. And this is a reproduction of one of the Queen's jewels. These are very, very rare. This is signed and this is uh, really beautiful. All the little baguettes, it does, it is missing a stone or two and I have to get them replaced, but this is worth showing to you. It is signed. So if you ever see anything that is Norman Hartnell, he did make reproductions of the Queen's jewels for the Queen to actually wear. And look how cool that is. That is so Art Deco. We have this, this is early crystal set in sterling. I have it on a safety pin because I like to use safety pins sometime to close things if I feel like it's too difficult. So look at the geometric shapes of that cut crystal and that's set in sterling. There's the back and this is just really indicative of good costume jewelry from the Art Deco period. I mean we wouldn't even call this costume today um, because it's set in sterling but back then you know it was rhodium plated and it's just absolutely exquisite look at take a good look this might not count as costume jewelry isn't it exquisite and this is lovely early hobay with the pink and the blue my favorite combination and you can tell hobay by the back the early hobay the way that they're set this is totally fun. This actually was a working watch at one time. I love the size of this. I wore this on a hat once, uh, New Year's Eve, and it's just spectacular. It's got a German name, it's Otto Grun, and it does, you can wind it up, you could still hear it kind of tick, but it doesn't keep good time, and it's enameled in the back. And that is just the height of Art Deco kind of Dadaism, surrealism. You know, the color combination, the gold and the black. And I just really love it. I wish you could feel it. It's so good. Then we have some of my favorite. These are both carved celluloid. This is on a chain that I put it on. This is a gold chain. And this is a cherub or a sprite. And this is early plastic carved celluloid, pre-Bakelite. Really lovely. And then this one... I strung these myself. This is a tourmaline strand that I strung myself and I knotted between each tourmaline. And I have as a closure a lingerie pin that I'm using. And then look how sweet this is. This is a hand painted boy and girl kissing celluloid, early celluloid. And I have some of these. I have some more of these in different motifs. So if you're interested, if you're a collector and you're interested in seeing them, I have two or three more that I would sell to the right person. So let me know if you're interested in that. My email is hudsonvintage at me.com. And also you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Hudson Vintage. This is gorgeous. They don't make them like this anymore. Look at this. Look at that motif. Look at the size of those stones. This is early Boucher. Boucher started out working for Cartier, so uh, there is some crossover actually. There are pieces at Cartier that are the same as early Boucher's. He started at Cartier, then he went to Maser, and then I think when Maser became Maser Brothers, he went out on his own and started Boucher, or Marcel Boucher, and it was originally with the MB. So this has an MB on it somewhere, and Look how beautiful that is. And here is the pin back here. So it would actually be worn more like that. 
absolutely wonderful Art Deco piece. Look at that. Early carved celluloid. This is thicker. This is a fairy, a winged fairy talking to a bird. How incredible. And this is on its original chain. And then this one I do not have a chain for. I wore this on a leather cord. It looked really good. And this is like a little cherubim with an abundance. I love the subject matter of these. They're all so magical and mythical and wonderful. These are gorgeous. These are colored paste. There's blue and green. Look at the sides, the carving. These are Art Deco bangles. These are rhodium plated or um, over base metal or possibly chrome. And they're all channel set square rhinestones. Square rhinestones were very popular in the Art Deco period. There you go. And it goes all the way around. Look at the um, open work in the back. This is also early Boucher, a very Art Deco motif. This is a pin and the earrings. They are gold plated over sterling. See the back is gold in this case, gold with gold. And these also have the square rhinestones in that aqua blue, very indicative of the time period. And they're just absolutely wonderful and timeless. These are gorgeous faux pearl. And these are rhodium plated and faux emerald and you can see the little crystals here in that sort of half moon shape that geometry very typical of the art deco period look at that this is a pansy brooch with a faux pearl early plastic and just really beautiful love the size of it love the colors this is british this is sterling and it's aged, it's never really been polished. It's very black on the back. It does say sterling. And those are marcasites and a real pearl. And they did use this combination quite a bit um, in the Art Deco period. And then this is very early Art Deco, very costume. This was meant to be costume. Look at it though. Okay, that is chrome and enameled on a plated, chain and the geometry of it just the height of deco this um in a medium shop in a medium market even though it's just enameled chrome because of the significance of the time period and the design this could go for two or three hundred dollars this is a gilded silver probably chinese origin could be british gold over sterling and enamel in the peacock feather motif and it's just absolutely exquisite and it has the clasp is one of the peacock beads and this is very rare beautiful art deco enameling beautiful art deco colors this is such an art deco kind of design the geometry the the industrial age influence and then look at this gorgeous gorgeous necklace that is pave crystals or pastes. This is signed Chrysler and it still has its matching earrings and that is Chrysler, Chrysler, I believe it is pronounced. Okay, these two things are kind of spectacular. This is rhodium plating, really beautiful. Look at the stones. I don't know if you can see it. You'll definitely be able to see it on the turntable. Just really exquisite, lovely little Art Deco kind of form. I love how the head is kind of three-dimensional. And then we have a diamond bar. This is the epitome of these Art Deco bracelets. These came in all different colors. I love the black one. They always have the buckle motif and they're really exquisite. Look at the way that is on the sides. This is made like fine jewelry. And it's signed diamond bar sterling. So by our standards today, it would be fine jewelry, but look at the hook there. See, it's this kind of a square and then that just goes in. See, so this slips into the box clasp, which is signed. And then there's a little hook here, which latches onto the ball there. And it's just very art deco and gorgeous and quality and will always keep its value. And these are expensive. If you find these in the right shop, these can be $800 depending on the color. I actually love the way these two kind of look together. <laughs>
Okay, this is one of the most important pieces I'm going to show you today. This is Germany. This is pre-World War. This is sterling enamel. This is called bubble jewelry. If you ever see this, it is highly collectible. Um, it, see, it looks like little bubbles. And they did this uh, with all different colors. And again, I love the black and white personally. I think it's very beautiful. But you can find this bubble jewelry in necklaces and earrings and pendants and bracelets. Um, you name it. And they're especially gorgeous and they're very German Art Deco of the time period. And then finally, I have these. I thought I'd show them to you all together kind of for impact. These are camphor glass, except for this one. This is a filigree. This is interesting because look at it. It's got like a nice, really nice rhodium plating, but it's just over pot metal. But it's very fine work. These were copies of Cartier, what Cartier was doing at the time with platinum they were the first ones to figure out how to do filigree like this and uh, they used platinum to do it and they kind of made platinum popular and then this is on a hairpin chain that is sterling very indicative of the art deco period and then we have these three different kinds of versions of camphor glass they're all beautiful in their own way that's camphor glass um, pot metal and it's in that kind of octagon and I just have it on a contemporary chain and then we have these are more neck pieces and oh this is what the back looks like of camphor glass and everything is kind of riveted in and then the real ones that aren't costume they also made camphor glass with gold and diamonds but this is a rhodium plated one and that shape is very Art Deco. And then we have also this one, which I love, that radiating camphor glass. And the chain on that one is different and delightful. And it has that kind of push-in clasp. This is a um, very typical of the Art Deco push-in clasp. But this goes through. There's what the back, there's what the other side of it looks like. It's kind of triangular. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. These are the rare and unusual Art Deco pieces that I pulled. Don't forget, next week is the big $20 pop-up. Click like, subscribe, ring the bell. Thank you for watching. See you next time.